We're now on our investigation into the Church of Scientology. We got curious after reading a series of stories in the St. Petersburg Times. We've been building on what we've learned for months. But as you'll see, not only does Scientology deny all the allegations, they say the people making them are liars out to destroy the church. The most senior leaders of the church made their objections clear for months, but would not sit down to talk about them, at least not without preconditions, until today. After our report, we'll be playing excerpts of those interviews. We want to make very clear, this is not a story about the philosophy of the church or the beliefs of its members. This is a story about alleged abuse within a religious organization and what those who have made the allegations say has happened to them. In late 03, there was a beating every day. And if it wasn't him doing it, it was from him inciting others to do it to others. In front of other people. In front of other people. Go along, baby. Morty Rathbun is the highest ranking former member of the Church of Scientology ever to speak out against its leader, David Miscavige. I was basically Mr. Fix-It for Scientology for a number of, well, a couple of decades, frankly. I mean, I was, wherever there was a fire, I, I was out there to put it out, whether it be, you know, counseling a VIP member or whether it be, you know, handling the PR from some suicide of a member or whether it be a lawsuit or whatever. Rathbun joined the church at the age of 19, devoting 27 years to Scientology. Before he left five years ago, he was a member of the Sea Organization, the international management team that runs the church. They sometimes wear naval-style uniforms. They're given room and board and earn just $50 a week. Rathbun became the inspector general, working for and reporting directly to David Miscavige. While Rathbun was there, he says Miscavige routinely assaulted church members. He treats his, his, his subordinates in, in all of international management like, um, like slaves in a slave camp and literally and beats them down. The idea of the leader of the church physically beating other members of the church seems to be completely against Scientology doctrine or what they're supposedly all about. You're right. They're absolutely diametrically opposed to the type of violence and beatdowns that this guy engages in and has created a culture of at the upper levels of Scientology. According to Rathbun, much of the violence occurred here, behind the guarded walls of the church's international headquarters, a 500-acre base near Riverside, California, where the Sea Organization managers work and live in communal housing. Sea Organization members signed a pledge to work for the church for one billion years, a contract for this lifetime and many others they believe are still to come. Rathbun says Sea Organization members believe the commitment is part of their eternal salvation, he says most rank-and-file Scientologists have no idea what really goes on here. The only people who know about it are people on that base, and the only ones of those who know about it are in international management. Actually, probably a couple of 300 probably know because they've seen one or more incidents. But um, those are the only people that know. Rathbun says this man, Mike Rinder, who was chief spokesman for the church, bore the brunt of the alleged abuse. One night in 1997, towards Christmas time, I get called down to Miscavige's room. Miscavige kicks the screen door open to his bedroom and comes running out in a terry cloth robe and just starts beating on Mike Rinder. I mean savagely beating on him across the face, in the stomach. You know, Mike bends over. Miscavige grabs him around the neck. There's a little tree by his, by his room. Swings him around, scrapes his face against a tree, down into the mud, and starts kicking the guy. Rinder's bleeding from the mouth because his face got scraped right across that tree. There's not a word said, Anderson. He never said a word to Rinder. Rathbun says in 2000, he saw David Miscavige attack Mike Rinder again in a conference room. Miscavige came in, pinned Rinder up uh, under the table in his chair, and w was whacking him upside the head, and then uh, grabbed him around the, rat and the neck, uh, choked him, and twisted him around and threw him to the ground by his neck. He had uh, marks on his neck for a week. Mike Rinder left the church in 2007. We tracked him down, and though he refused to appear on camera, he told us he was physically assaulted some 50 times by Miscavige and verified Rathbun's accounts. Church officials and their attorneys say both former Sea Organization members are liars. First of all, the allegations are absolutely untrue. There, there, there was nothing of the sort, um, as they're describing, um, by Mr. Miscavige. David Miscavige has never form. kicked somebody. Absolutely Never not. punched somebody. Absolutely not. Never strangled somebody. No. Never, 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 never. Absolutely not. That's Tommy That's Davis, a Scientologist for 20 years. He replaced Mike Rinder as chief spokesman for the church when after 38 years as a church member, Rinder quit. Marty Rathburn says it happened. Mike Rinder says it happened. You say? They're, they're lying. 
It's absolutely not true. I mean, it's ridiculous. David Miscavige has declined to speak for himself. But in the months we've spent preparing these reports, Church of Scientology officials have provided us with affidavits, declarations, and dozens of emails and letters. They come from ex-spouses and current leaders of the church who worked for decades with the accusers and also with David Miscavige. They both defend and praise Miscavige, and they assert emphatically David Miscavige never abused anyone. They say that Mike Rinder and Marty Rathbun did. It was part of what led to uh, Marty Rathbun's removal because that is the kind of behavior that actually he was involved in, and it led to his uh, ultimate complete removal from any position whatsoever in the church. So you're saying that David Miscavige learned that Marty Rathbun had been hitting people, that's bunch right. of people, physically assaulting that's people, right. and that's why he was let go? Uh, it was one idea. of the reasons. It was one of the reasons. And for the record, did you ever punch anybody? Yes. Marty Rathbun admits he assaulted church employees, but insists that's what David Miscavige wanted him to do. Yeah, listen, I was had a lot of pressure put on me because I was the inspector general, which was the position directly below him on the whole ecclesiastical hierarchy for years and years. And he used to rag on me all the time and constantly push me to get physical with people and, and berate me because I wasn't showing my loyalty by, you know, smacking them into line type of thing. And I got to tell you, I've admitted to, some, to, 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 to doing a few of those, but not like he did. In their affidavit, the former C organization co-workers and ex-spouses dispute Rinder and Rathbun's claims. The ex-spouses say they never saw any physical evidence of abuse, and they say their husbands never said a word. But it turns out Rathbun and Rinder are not the only ones saying there was a culture of violence created by David Miscavige. The next thing I knew, I'm being smacked in the face and knocked down in the ground in front of all these people. They see the Pope. You know, knocking me down on the ground. David Miscavige was the one leading this whole physical violence kick. And it was him who was beating people up. Tomorrow, their story and the church's response. As we mentioned earlier, it took top church leaders until today to sit down with us without any preconditions to discuss the allegations against their leader. They, along with the ex-wives of the men you just saw, say Marty Rathbun is lying, that he was the violent one. They called him bitter and angry, the man who had him removed from his position in the church. Now, here's an excerpt of the interview with the ex-wives. I asked them about some affidavits signed by senior church leaders that indicated a number of violent incidents stretching over several years. No police were ever called, no charges were ever filed, and the church claims the leader of the church had no idea it was happening at the time. In 2003, it came up that Marty Rathbun had been mistreating others. And at that so point for, in time... So for about three years, according to members of the church, mm -hmm. your husband was physically assaulting. It was, in, it was isolated incidents. It well, well, this isn't isolated incidents. This is a consistent, virulent uh, physical harassment. Yeah, you're, that, we understand what you're saying, yeah. and here's the, the fact. No, what, what I'm saying is that you, 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 you were married to a man who for three years had a, was a high-ranking member of this church who was assaulting people, and, and, and Mr. nothing Miscavige, seems to be done about it. Mr. Miscavige was not at the, at the property at the time. Do you not have telephones? Of course we have telephones. So I, I think you you're being quite rude and quite insulting. Here's the bottom line. Here's the bottom line. There is no history of violence in the church. That There was isolated instances, and yes, you, have, that you do have written declarations that Marty Rathman was a violent man. He was a violent, psychotic man. Now I want you to hear from another senior leader of the church, a man who worked closely with the church's founder, L. Ron Hubbard. He, too, strongly defends Hubbard's successor, David Miscavige, and is insisting Marty Rathman is making false accusations. Let's keep this in the perspective of you. Marty Rathbun is the perpetrator of this. As I said in my affidavit too, there is a saying in Scientology called the overt, which is like a transgression, doth speak loudly in accusation. The man's bitter, he's an apostate, he's defrocked, he's out, he's not a Scientologist, he never, ever, ever will be a Scientologist again. He is now pointing the finger to my senior. That's like a monk or a priest who has now been caught out by the Pope for doing things, pedophile, whatever you want, inside the church, he's been kicked out, and now he's turning around pointing finger to the Pope? When, no, this is not okay. Well, there's much more to these interviews, which we'll be bringing you all this week on 360. Going back to last August, we've asked many times that Church of Scientology Chairman of the Board, David Miscavige, appear on 360 for this series. His spokesman, Tommy Davis, has declined for Ms. Miscavige, but our invitation is still open. We'd love to have him on the program. As always, you can dig deeper online at ac360.com. And if you want to learn more about Scientology from the church's perspective, we've put up a link. Our series continues tomorrow with others now speaking out about what they say went on.